So this is great work and developing inner and outer magnetism is really uh, a powerful and helpful and enjoyable thing to know about if you're going to practice yoga because it starts with the inner magnetism and how do you develop inner magnetism purify the narratives that's the harder part of it that's the more annoying part of it but also using kundalini yoga kriyas is an example of something and the fact of the matter is that you know of course dogs can hear this whole spectrum of sound that we can't hear and there's a whole spectrum of light that we can't see with the ordinary you know seeing eyes that's what in the Sankhya they describe as the Panchamahabhuta, the five great elements, where these bodies in our, in our uh, apparatus, sensory apparatus of the bodies, the avenues of our consciousness, really. This is the domain in which the senses live within earth, water, fire, air, and space, like that. And so when... when what we're doing in yoga practice is, in a certain way, purifying those five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and space, akasha is space, ether, so that we get the more desirable expressions of them and we reduce the less desirable expressions of them. It's simple. This is yoga and this is basics of Ayurveda. And, and it's functional and it's practical and you, can, you will either see results or you won't. It's not... It's not a philosophical belief system, really. It's, a, it's, a, it's an art and a science that can guide one's experience. So you come up with your own belief system, if you want. Meaning, like, you're going to whatever... We all have different influences. We have beliefs that we grew up with. We have beliefs that are unique to our own experience. And, and so on and so forth. In other words, there's all sorts of different narratives of the mind that we hold that are kind of in motion under the surface and that's the lens through which we perceive our life so the idea here is in purifying the elements is that you're kind of purifying the lens through which we see life and the the idea is to more and more have an experience of actuality more and more having experience of of some sort of uh, supreme reality is the idea and some people call a supreme reality God. Some call, people call a supreme reality Allah. Some people call a supreme reality Krishna. Some people call a supreme reality. They call it, there's many ways there is to call it. There's about, people call it. But in, in one way or another, each of us, we come into these bodies. We're in them for a period of time. And then we go. And while we're in these bodies, we have five primary sense organs, which are governed by the five elements. And then we have five primary organs of activity, which are governed by the five elements. So the five senses, sense organs, you have your eyes, fire element, you have the taste, water element, you have fragrance, smell, earth element, you have touch, tactile perception in the air element, and ether is sound. Akasha is sound then that hap that even that operates on all sort of even subtle levels. So, for instance, if you're hanging out looking at the screens, you're interacting with fire element because it has to do with vision. It has to do with uh, the ability to see. And on the subtle level, your ability to be able to perceive reality, fire element. So we want the more desirable expression of the fire element. It can either create, you know, rage and anger and and uh, envy and jealousy, greed a little bit, or it can create epiphany. It can give you it can give you the clarity of the clarity of intuitive wisdom, experiential wisdom. That's also a fire element. It can give you warmth of the heart. So this is what yoga, this is what Ayurveda, and this is what Tantra all share in common. Purification of the five tattvas, five elements. Make sense? And what you hear is more than just what you hear, like when you're listening to someone talk, you're listening to the physical kind of sound waves of, the, of someone's voice or the music. But what you hear is also works on more subtle 
somewhat metaphorical levels is how we would describe them in, in, in a, if we're trying to put it into language. What are you hearing about your life? What are you hearing about, about your, you know, the ability to generate real magnetism, real confidence, that's inside work. What are we hearing about ourselves? How are we listening to, what, what, what parts of the mind's narratives are we listening to? And what parts are we not listening to? And so forth. And then all of it becomes, ugh. There's a lot going on once you kind of lift up the hood. <laughs> but all of us want the, we want our exterior to be shining, don't we? We all want to look good and we all want to feel good and we want to be happy. But in order to sustain that part for the long run, the outer magnetism, first we have to work with the inner magnetism. And we like the sound of magnetism. It feels good. It's kind of like, it sounds like, yes, I would like a dose of magnetism, please. <laughs> but the question is, what is getting magnetized? And, and so all of our thoughts have magnetics. They're mag That's kind of what the human being is, can be easily understood as, is, is kind of magnetism, electromagnetic creature of some sort. All creatures have some magnetic field. And so it's not that it's not some necessarily new age concept. This is old stuff. And if you if you can look at life through the lens of magnetism, then you can. I think some things might start to really make sense. At all times, you're either drawing in or pushing away certain things, because everything magnetism has both something that you want to draw things towards you, and then of course the things you don't want, you want to push them away from you. And so when the mind is left on its kind of default settings, what does it tend to do? It tends to grasp, it tends to grasp onto pleasure. It's trying to attract pleasures towards us. And it's trying to push pains away. But if we leave the mind on its, that natural impulse, which we all have as human creatures, the psyche of the human, that, that grasping onto what feels comfortable and pushing away that which feels uncomfortable, if we leave that just kind of like on the impulse mode, then that's also a type of magnetism. But it's not necessarily going to lead us into happiness, which we're all trying to experience. A more, a more sincere happiness. A happiness that has that little joy inside of it. And it doesn't disappear when life goes difficult. Because the less we have that impulse of pushing away discomfort and pains and challenges then the less we also have the, the, um, the tendency to emotionally grasp onto that which is comfortable. I think people hear this, and also I at one point thought of it like this, is like if I'm going to, to not grasp onto things that are pleasures, that I'm not gonna, I need to like not have pleasure in my life. Sometimes subconsciously we do that because also certain spiritual traditions are very kind of like Saturnian like that. And pleasure is like, it's, you know, especially when it's most of the dudes running the show, the pleasure is nowhere to be found. <laughs> but you get a little feminine energy in there and you find the wisdom of pleasure. So, but the, my experience is the reality of pleasure is the less I'm grasping onto it as an emotional neediness, the more I actually have pleasure and enjoy pleasure. You see, that's magnetism. Have you ever noticed that when you're needy for something, it's kind of nowhere to be found? Neediness is like a repellent for that which you want. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> Emotional neediness. But sometimes we find ourselves in that place, you know. So then we have, I think we're getting wiser and wiser. I think people think a lot of the times that everything's going to shit. And that is also true. But <laughs> I also think things are getting great. And I think... I think we are getting wiser and wiser. We're learning how to, you know, everybody's like, it's like cool to regulate your nervous system. You know, that's good news, don't you think? Even in sports I'm watching and like the young, the young athletes that are coming up, they're so much more emotionally evolved than like the superstars that I grew up watching, you know, who are awesome and I love, but, you know, very macho. And, uh, and so that kind of, that, to me it's a like purification of the elements, 
it's not getting rid of masculinity. It's purifying the masculinity. It's purifying the femininity. But not purifying it. It's purifying of that which is kind of cloaking true masculinity. Purifying that which is cloaking true femininity. You see what I mean? So I, I think it's always important in yoga practice when we talk purification to be clear, what is it that we're purifying? We're not purifying some original sin. We're not purifying anything like that. All we're purifying is the obstructions of perception that occur from the waves of the mind. That's like that. And, and so the, the, what we are what we are at the level of the atma, the non-dying energy of us, is beyond our, our ability to describe it. And so all of our life is in order to, to describe things in human life, you have to, there has to be comparison. You have to have duality. You have to have polarities. There, for masculine, there has to be feminine. For positive, there has to be negative. You can't even have the concept of positive without negative. What's better, positive or negative? You can't. How could either one be ultimately better when you takes both of them for either of them to exist at all? Make sense? So things can be relatively better, but they can't be supremely, ultimately better. Positive or negative. So it's positive based on what what context it's not it's not it's not the the circumstances of the life that is most important but rather it's the context in which we're able to experience the circumstances of our life and that's the work of a yogi can you kind of widen the lens a little bit so that we're not getting dominated by magnetism, by the polarities of the mind, because that's how magnetics work. There's a positive pole and there's a negative pole. It's a feminine pole and there's a masculine pole. And so, and so the chi, the prana, the life force, is your magnetism, and it flows between those two poles. Just like you see in cell division, like remember that from biology class? And at first all, you have all these little spindles, and then as a cell is moving towards, what's the process called of cell division? Mitosis? Boom. <laughs> I remembered it. <laughs> Mark that one right on my quiz. <laughs> Mitosis. I knew this was going to come in handy back in eighth grade. <laughs> um, the the spindles start to kind of, they're first scattered about, then they start to gather around the two poles, don't they? And then once you get the spindles gathered around the two poles, and all of a sudden they, poop, they, a new cell is born. New life. Interesting, isn't it? And that's what happens in all the time in our lives. And so, so that is a nice kind of imagery for what you're doing in the yogic process. Because what we're endeavoring to do is to very simply concentrate the chi, concentrate the prana, so it's being less utilized, used up by things in, of, the, of the outer world that are not really useful. Does that make sense? So in other words, my mind may be thinking about how that motherfucker da 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 and they da 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 and da 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 and I might spend half a day running that narrative and going through the stories of that. Okay, fine. But is this good use of my life force chi because I will have that that net negative of that chi left for my day that was used up in that. That's why when yogis are using mantras for practices to kind of, kind of just keep the magnetic energy strong. In other words, keep the mind in, its, in the energy in its space of, let me only pay attention to what is actually important. And there's all sorts of things in our relationships that are absolutely actually important. If we try to just do mantras all day and not pay attention to the many things that are asking for our attention in our life, those mantras aren't going to work very well. Why? Because we have we have responsibilities, we have karmas, and 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 so it's not about getting away from it. It's not about uh, um, kind of retreating from our life. It's about 
being having enough magnetic strength to come t- to meet life with presence to meet life with presence without it overpowering our happiness without it overpowering our sense of creativity and joy so this takes work so when you concentrate life force in the central nervous system then what it what it's doing is kind of when no longer you having so much energy that's kind of going here, there's a certain amount of our energy that needs to go out. But when it's set up, when that system is still on the default settings, it's just going to go wherever it's pulled. And there's going to be so many things that don't deserve your life force's attention that is going to pull the life force. And then we end up with a bit of a net loss. Make sense? So what we're just trying to do is to have more strength of boundary with the outer world so that we can actually bring presence for the things of the outer world that our life really needs, the dharma of our life and the karmas of our life. You never It's never a question, what is it that life really needs? Life shows it at, life puts it right in front of our face. You can't ever you can't ignore the things that life really needs, can you? And so this is great work, and developing inner and outer magnetism is really uh, a powerful and helpful and enjoyable thing to know about if you're going to practice yoga, because it starts with the inner magnetism. And how do you develop inner magnetism? Purify the narratives. That's the harder part of it. That's the more annoying part of it. But also using Kundalini Yoga Kriyas is an example of something. Any yoga practice is helping to concentrate the chi, concentrate the life force. Because if the life force, and this is, this is just the journey we're about to do for this class, just the context for it. But, if, but when the life force is ordinarily due to the many activities of our lives and needs of our lives is getting more out into the periphery just think of it where your attention goes the prana flows so it's in the what we can call the peripheral nervous system it's activating your five organs of behavior what are those the hands the feet the sex organ the organ of elimination the tongue so let so life experiences happen to us based on the inner energy the inner magnetism is how we'll perceive what is happening to us whether we can see it actually for what it is or are we getting slammed by only one of its poles the negative pole is fucking horrible the positive pole this is the most amazing you know and neither of them are true but that's not doesn't mean we don't feel that it's true at that time but ultimately neither of them are true Do you see where the compassion always has to be present when you start to go down this road? The whole thing held in that basket of compassion. Because, yes, you'll see when you start this, opening the field of awareness, you start to see, ah, it's absolutely not true. But this is how I feel anyways. And you love yourself. Because what we understand with our wisdom, sometimes our emotion isn't following that at the moment. And so we have to keep love for ourselves and not get down on ourselves and not start thinking like we ain't shit. Sometimes we feel that way. We don't feel, we feel lousy about ourselves. That's our moments. And then to compound that, we're like, I don't feel, see, then you feel shitty about feeling shitty about yourself, don't we? And then it just kind of cycles like that. So the way to, the way to kind of intercept that narrative is to love to love yourself without denying any of that it's like feel lousy feel yourself feeling lousy about yourself and feel the lousiness that comes out of that feeling and don't be scared of it because you're doing it as an act of compassion and if you feel safe enough to feel how lousy you feel and then if you can even feel how lousy you feel about feeling lousy and then you can just love yourself. Maybe, maybe you wish you had a friend you know, or someone else to love, but maybe they're not there and you don't have a friend. But you're going to love yourself anyways. And, you do, and how? By allowing yourself to feel lousy. Allowing that. So important. Then 
you see awareness, what are you doing? You're applying, you're bringing awareness to lousiness and the feeling of lousiness. Now what's happened? You feel it. I think the feminine is tends to be more more advanced in this than the masculine generally speaking when you feel you can feel the la- feel that you'll start to feel less lousy it, that thing's going to metabolize and awareness is intelligence it's consciousness itself and as i heard once dr lad say all emotion is energy in motion all emotion is energy in motion emotion on the path to becoming love. All emotions are energy in motions on the path to becoming love. And it's the tattvas. Air creates worries, anxieties. Ether creates feeling of not belonging. Fire creates uh, anger and, and rage. Water creates m- sorrow, melancholy. Earth creates stuckness. But then earth can create stability. Water can create sweetness, love. Fire can create warmth of the heart. Air can create this kind of almost like angelic-like presence. And, and ether can make you feel connected to every living thing. All of those are true. And so this is all just working with the tattvas. And when, then when these practices we're going to use come in, is giving you something that bypasses the whole thinking mind at this point. And now it's going into embodied experience of it. Hey, thanks for watching on YouTube. Best easy way to stay in touch with us. Hit the subscribe button here. You'll see our videos when they come up. If you enjoyed this one, hit the like button. It'll help more people see it, help the channel grow. I appreciate you watching.